We really have finished this tutorial. We have this wave going through a cloak and it looks really nice. So in this last video, we're just going to dress this up a little bit. So I think it looks a little bit nicer and we're going to animate the wave and also put an object in there that we're actually cloaking. Well, the wavelength, I think it needs to be just a little bit smaller. Let's try 0 0.1. I think that's going to look pretty nice. And the phase is the next thing we want to play with. Let's make a movie that is 50 frames long. And we can set this like in a PowerPoint presentation so it can repeat. And it looks like the wave just keeps going and going and going. And we want the wave to be continuous and not glitch. So we want a movie that's about 50 frames long. And I think that's pretty good for wave cycling. If, it wants, if you want it to be faster, 40 frames, slower, you can do up to like 70 or 80 frames. It's something that you can play with. Anyway, at frame one, we want the phase to be zero. And so we'll set the phase to zero. We'll make sure on the frame counter that it's set to one. And if you have a lot of frames, if you ever have like thousands of frames and you're having a hard time dragging this to the, the frame you want to select, you can type that right here. So that'll be the current frame. We want that to be the first one. So at the first frame, we have zero phase. I'm going to hover, not click on anything, but hover over this zero. Now I will right click and say insert keyframe. So that tells Blender at frame one, phase will be zero. So if I even try to change it, um, as soon as I you know move and come back, it's at zero, it's fixed. I'd have to go change it to something else, right click and then say replace keyframe if I actually wanted to change it. Okay, so now we're gonna scroll up to frame 50, which actually isn't the correct frame right here. And we want to go through all two pi phase. So if I were to set this frame 50 to two pi phase, well, two pi phase and zero phase are the same thing. And so when it repeats and goes back to frame one, it's going to have two identical frames and there'll be this tiny little glitch. And it may be subtle, but I promise you it will irritate you. So the easiest way to fix this is actually go up to frame 51, one frame after and then set the phase this one to two times pi, two times pi, and then I'll right click and say insert keyframe. So now at frame 51, that will be two pi, but 51 won't render in the movie because it's only 50 frames. So at frame 50, that'll be the last frame before it goes back to one, and the next frame should be two pi, it's C0, and we have a nice continuous thing. Now we have one more problem to fix and let's play this to actually see the problem and maybe you can catch it. So let's go ahead and play. Um, you can click the play button or just hit space bar. I'll click the, the play button now. Notice how it seems to be speeding up and slowing down and that happens by default. And there's a way to fix that. We need to change the extrapolation mode. So we're gonna click on this animation tab. And in the upper left here, I'm gonna set that to look at the shader. So I'm looking at my shader on the upper left. I'm looking at my object on the right. And let's also, I'll hover my cursor up here and use the scroll wheel and then go to the rendered view. So I'm, I'm looking at that. Um, click on the, click on the wave. I'm gonna click on this phase box. And then down here's the timeline, but we need a slightly different view. So I'm gonna click on this down arrow and change this to graph editor. So get a little bit more room here and I'll, I'll scroll to zoom out. This red line is the phase and notice it starts very slow. It speeds up and then slows down. We don't want that. We just want a straight line. And so the easy way to do that, uh, there's a few ways to do that, but I like to go to I'm um, oh, sorry, channel, extrapolation mode, and go to linear. And notice now it goes to linear. I like this linear mode because let's just say I have a thousand frames in my movie because maybe I'm doing some kind of slow camera orbit, but I still want this to repeat every 50 frames. If I use this linear interpolation, I can do zero phase at one frame, two pi phase at 51 frames, and all the frames after that, it will keep increasing, increasing. This animation won't be using that. All right, let's go back to the layout because we don't need all of that. Now, 
hit the play button and you should see a nice continuous smooth wave. It's not speeding up or slowing down. And that's, that's really what we want. Um, the last thing we might want to do is give it an object that it's cloaking. I'm going to scroll to a frame where that one plane sort of disappears. Um, let's actually get rid of that frame. So I'm going to click on this object and hit the tab key. And now we're inside of this. I'm going to click off so nothing's selected. And I'm going to click on that vertex and then press Control L. And what that's going to do is then select everything connected to it. I'm going to hit the delete key and delete vertices. Then if I hit tab again, we'll go back into object mode or I could select it up here at the top. Okay, that, that plane was irritating me. It's great for troubleshooting, but when you want to make something look good, it, it, I, I don't like it. But feel free to keep it if you did like it. Let's make an object. Let's do something kind of cool here. Let's go ahead and add... Oh, sorry, wrong window. Add mesh. Let's do a, an icosphere. And of course, that's way too big. We need to shrink this down so it's inside where we're cloaking. And yeah, this is an artist thing, not an engineer thing. So we can get pretty close. And that looks pretty good, I think. So the icosphere is not really cool enough for me. So I'm going to click on this wrench. These are called modifiers. And I think a really cool thing to do would just be to show its, its mesh. So I'm going to add a modifier, generate wireframe, and see what that did. Now we just look at sort of the mesh of it. And let's give it a material. We'll give it a new. And let's go down to emission. Maybe we'll make this uh, green. How about that green? and a strength of 10. It's going to be a glowing green. And that's what we're cloaking. So I hit the, the zero on my numpad, or you can also hit the camera key and get that same view. And I wanna just set up the, the render view. I'm gonna hit uh, render an image. And that's what this is going to look like. And I'll also show you how to create a an animation, the, the way I like, MP4s. So at this point, you would say image, save as, and you could save it as a PNG and, and do a variety of things with it. But I like to save it as a movie. And you can't just do render animation. If you do that, what it's going to do, it's going to save 50 still images that you would then have to, in another piece of software, stitch them together into an animation. Now, professional animators do it that way because they're animating tens of thousands of frames. And if your rendering crashes halfway through, when you save the frames as you go, you can pick up where you left off. This is a short little animation. So I like to save straight to a movie file. And this took me a while to figure out how to do that. But we wanna go on this output setting. And by default, Blender will save things in your temp folder. And so click on that and browse to somewhere more convenient to put that. Now under file format, instead of a PNG file, uh, I like to do MP4. So what we'll do is we'll do an FFmpeg video. Then under encoding, instead of the Matroska, I don't know much about the encoding. So if you know what you're doing here, uh, you'll probably do better than me. But I'm going to bring that up to an MPEG-4. And then under output quality, I tend to use high quality for my things. But if you want smaller file size, certainly uh, lower quality would be good. And now that's ready. It will save an MP4 in whatever folder you selected up here. And we would just say render animation. So let's go ahead and do that. And you'll watch what Blender does. It's going to pop up each individual frame. And so sometimes you won't see the black. You'll see the transparent background. And you think Blender is doing something kind of weird. But it's just something quirky as it's rendering a movie. But we can watch it cycle through the frames. And luckily, we're using EV. So this is relatively quick. And you probably have a faster computer than I'm using. And hopefully, yours is rendering quicker. But if not, EV is really not too bad here. So when this finishes, I will pull up the movie. And then we'll play it, and hopefully that'll look really good. And I'll give you some suggestions of some other things you can do. I won't show you how to do those here, but um, things that I like to do. Okay, we are done rendering. Let me go grab the movie file. 
Okay, here is the movie we just created. Let me make that nice and big for us. I'm gonna set it to repeat and let's let it play. And it should play glitch free because we handled the phase correctly. That is really it. Um, some hints of some things that I like to do. Sometimes I like to go in the shader and use a node setup to kind of blur these edges, uh, the hard edges little bit irritating i think um you can imagine just showing one or two planes you could go into your your node setup and that mapping node you can change the direction so you could actually have the wave coming at a diagonal just with that first mapping node and everything will still work other things i like to do i like to maybe do a stars in the background because the plain black um, can be boring and if you have a lot of other information going on, maybe you're putting this in a PowerPoint presentation, the plain black would look good. But if this is going to go full screen, some subtle stars and maybe some nebula kind of things in the background will be good. And I also like to add camera orbits. That really helps people's brains interpret the three-dimensionality. And I have tutorials on all of this stuff on the, on the website. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this. I'd really like to see what you do with this and give me some ideas on how to use this and make cool things.